Uh-oh. That's more oil than what I put in there. Hello and welcome. My name is Waldo, and as you just saw, something is leaking fluid into the crankcase of this backhoe. Now I suspect that it's hydraulic fluid. The Detroit diesel engine has a gear-driven power steering pump that not only powers the hydraulic power steering, but also boosts the brakes with a hydro boost unit. The last time I drove the machine, I noticed that the power steering and the brakes required more effort than usual to operate. Because of this, I suspect that the pump may be what's causing fluid to leak into the crankcase. So, I'd like to remove the pump so I can disassemble it. But before I can do that, I need to drain out the hydraulic fluid. Before we get into the video, this is interesting. Apparently, Joe Biden is commenting on my videos under the username Dab of Iron. Joe writes, Dude, you've got that hoist way too extended. You can see it bending, and more obviously, it's trying to tip over. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> Joe, thank you for commenting, because it helps the YouTube algorithm. Anyway, let's get to work. All right, so the hydraulic fluid drains out of this hose right there. There's just a threaded uh, end cap that screws off and it should drain right out. The hydraulic reservoir has a capacity of 26 gallons, although it's not completely full. The total hydraulic system capacity is 48 gallons, so it's definitely possible that fluid might drain from parts of the system other than the hydraulic reservoir itself. With that said, I have six buckets ready to collect this fluid, so hopefully that's enough. That comes off nice and easily. I'm starting out with a small white bucket here because I don't know what's gonna come out of this. For all I know, there could be some really nasty sediment at the bottom. So I wanna use a white bucket so that I can see the contaminated fluid that comes out, see all the crap that's in the bottom of it. Most of the buckets I have are black, so I guess that's why that's relevant. Here goes nothing. I hope I don't make too much of a mess. Huh. And that's water. It's quite a bit of water. Oh my goodness. Come on. There we go. All right. Oh, that's nasty. <laughs> All right. It looks like oil now. It's coming out more slowly than I expected. I was kind of planning for fluid to come out very quickly, and it would be kind of a nightmare to swap buckets, but this is really not too bad. Oh, I got a helper. <laughs> Hi, Aspen. All right. There we That is nasty. Oh my god. <laughs> All of a sudden it looks like there's a bunch of water coming out for some reason. I don't know why. That actually might be it. Well that is weird. So water came out first and you would expect water to go first because water is heavier than oil. but for like this nasty, dirty water to come out towards the end there. I'm not really sure why that would happen, but it certainly did look like water. Even though it's just dripping now and it's almost done, what's coming out does look pretty nasty, so I guess I'll just let it drip for a while, but I should be able to just leave this. There's plenty of room left in this bucket. Um, this is the power steering pump in question. It's tricky to film, and it's even trickier to access. All right, so first I just gotta remove these hydraulic hoses. We have one here, this is the output, I think. Uh, this is probably the input, and this is the return. <laughs> there we go. A little bit of a 
mess, of course. All right, so for this back one here, I guess we'll start out with the 18 inch adjustable wrench. And if this doesn't work, then we'll get out the big boy 24 inch. <sighs> yeah, I think I'm getting it. transmission probably is going to get a nice bath of oil here, but I do have a drain pan underneath it. Actually, you know what? I might need to move it a little bit. There we go. For this hose. Oh, there we go. All right. So it is now time to take this pump apart so we can figure out what's wrong with it. So the pump is driven by this gear and it spins pretty freely so that's a good sign. <laughs> it also still does function as you can kind of see it's shooting oil out there. There's no play in the shaft also a good sign. Now I suspect what the issue may be is that there's a seal uh, for this shaft that prevents the hydraulic oil from coming into the engine crankcase and also I suppose keeps the uh, engine oil from going into the pump and I'm hoping that that seal is worn and that's just what needs to be replaced but we're going to take it apart and find out. There are a couple o-rings here they're pretty old, so I'm going to replace these. I wonder if I can pull it off. Yeah, it just comes off by hand. That. It's a pump that uses two gears to create the pressure. Um, there are two bearings on this side that these gear shafts stick into. Those look pretty good. They're needle bearings. So I'm going to leave those as is. We get this gear right here. Yeah, so there's uh, there are also needle bearings. Uh, on this side as well and you actually it's pretty hard to see from this end but there is a seal in there you can actually see it pretty well from over here uh, just this seal right here so I guess I'm now that I have that shaft out I will be, I should be able to pull this seal out and then bang a new seal in and I think that'll fix my problem there it is so the outside diameter of this seal is about 1.248. So this shaft, I don't know if you can see there, but there's a shiny spot there where the seal was rubbing up against it. So that's kind of all worn out. That may actually be why it's leaking. It's probably that plus the fact that the rubber on the seal is pretty old, so it wasn't doing a good job. And that is uh, exactly three quarters of an inch. That hopefully will be a pretty easy seal to find. So I'll go uh, see if McMaster Carr has a seal to replace this and uh, 
they have pretty fast shipping, so if they do, they'll probably get it to me uh, within a day or two. Several days later. All right, so my order from McMaster Car came in and I got a brand new seal and a bag of 100 O-rings because that's the smallest quantity that you can buy, but that's okay. They're actually still pretty cheap. I feel like it was maybe six bucks or something like that for 100 O-rings. So the seal here should fit right in this hole. It's got a coating around the outside of it and I believe when you have this coating, they don't want you to use anything like Loctite or anything like that to seal the outside. This coating handles that for you. So you basically just bang it in with a socket. All right, and I, I don't want it to go in too far. I may have actually just pushed it in too far. Well, there is no such thing as too far, I guess. There's a lip on the inside of this, preventing me from going in too far. I did want to make sure that it doesn't go in so far that the uh, lip of the seal matches up with these grooves on this shaft. And I may have already done that, but we'll, I'll stick this in and we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, I guess I can measure. That'll be okay now. It should, the lip does not quite line up with the groove in the shaft, so looks like that's pretty good. We'll leave it as is. And here it is. That is the power steering pump. Who'd have thunk you could disassemble one of these and rebuild it yourself that easily? So I ordered a new gasket off of eBay, I think, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and install this. So I'm gonna use Permatex high tech gasket sealant. I really like this stuff. I'm gonna apply it to one side of it. So this side actually has this sort of like rubber-like material to help seal the gasket. Uh, I'm going to install it just to this side, the side that doesn't have that, and this will help attach it to the uh, power steering pump. And by not applying any sealant to this side, it'll let me kind of move it around to line up the bolt holes without this sticking to the engine itself. And with that, the gasket sticks pretty well to the pump. So I can just uh, put this into place and then screw the bolts in, tighten them up, and we're good to go. So before I try to start this thing up, I'm going to go ahead and drain the oil out of the crankcase and then I'm going to fill it back up with fresh oil uh, because the existing oil is contaminated with hydraulic fluid. It's probably not the worst thing in the world to run the engine with hydraulic fluid in the oil, but let's not take any chances. It's got kind of an awkward square drain plug. Oh, it wasn't very tight. Or maybe it just doesn't feel tight because I'm using a huge wrench. Nice dark engine oil coming out. Well, it's pretty cold out, so I'm gonna let this drain for a little while. Uh, obviously, I didn't wanna run the engine to uh, heat the oil up so it'll drain easier, but I have plenty of time to let it drain. And I'm gonna go work on other stuff and I'll come back later. Later.
really need a smaller wrench than this. This is a little bit ridiculous. Let's see what size this is. Yep, all right. Five eighths, I probably won't remember that next time I do an oil change on this. So now to refill this thing back up with oil. Uh, it takes a, an SAE 40 straight grade oil. Conventional oil, nothing synthetic, nothing too special. Uh, in this case, I'm using Shell Rotella T1, which is a great choice. Uh, this is CF2 rated, which means it's specifically rated for two stroke engines. Now with a filter change, this would take about three and a half gallons, but I'm not changing the filter or draining the filter housing. So I think it's gonna just take about three gallons. It's a little tricky to pour in here with this loader frame in the way. All right, looks good. All right, so it's time to refill the hydraulic reservoir. I managed to salvage almost three buckets of this, of what I took out of it. Oops. Just a quick sanity check here. Shouldn't be able to see the level. Nope, still got plenty more to add. All right, I can see the oil level now. Uh, I still have to add probably new, another bucket though. All right, there we go. So when you're checking the oil level on this, um, you're supposed to have the front bucket level on the ground and then the backhoe itself is supposed to be in the travel position. So we're pretty close to the right configuration for checking the correct level. Obviously I'm gonna have to run the engine and then uh, check it again. And we are actually a little bit above the high mark. So I'm gonna leave it there and we'll see what happens after I run it. So let's get this thing started up. We'll let it warm up to operating temperature and then we'll test the brakes and the steering to see how they feel. You guys are in for a treat because it's 28 degrees outside and this machine has not been started yet today. So this is a cold start. No glow plugs, no intake preheater, no ether, just pure compression. Battery's a little low. So we got this thing charging at 15 amps with the hazard fraught battery charger, and we'll come back and try again in a little bit. 20 minutes later.
With the power steering pump fixed, the next project on this machine is to deal with the leaking hydraulic valve body for the backhoe and stabilizers. I'll be disassembling it and repairing it as necessary. Some of you have asked about the next come and swap video. My plan is to reinstall the engine and transmission and then work on getting the clutch release to work. There's going to be a lot of fabric cobbling involved since I need to convert a clutch pedal meant for a hydraulic clutch release to work with the cable operated clutch release lever of the transmission. Lastly, I want to give a shout out and a huge thanks to those of you who have subscribed recently. Since I released my last video, the channel has more than tripled in subscribers due to YouTube recommending my come and swap introduction video. Thank you so much for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. And then work on getting the crutch, crutch, clutch, <laughs> clutch release to work. Who wrote this script? <laughs> <laughs>